guys thank you to all my subscribers for coming back and supporting the channel and if you're new here welcome in october we're going to be learning about mountains for geography we'll also be studying europe uh, so in this book list i'm going to be talking about all things mountains they're going to be educational books and the europe book list that i will put out will be all of our story books so the first book is called about habitats mountains it's written by Catherine sill and john sill and i love uh, some of their other books there was one called about birds that was really good but anyhow, this one is just a really good overview of mountains, where they are, and different animals that live on the mountains. And at the end, each page has a more in-depth description about um, what this mountain scene is, what the mountain range is, some more about animals. And it has very short sentences, so this is something that uh, elementary kids could read um, and you could help them read as well. I like that and I like the very realistic um, drawings. And actually the author's husband uh, who helped her co-write this book, he did the illustrations and he has a degree in, I believe, biology and he has a hobby of painting and he just did such a wonderful job. And so this is the afterword in the book. And again, like I mentioned, each uh, page that had a photo on it. It gives a little bit more in-depth explanation about that mountain or mountain range, which I like. So if you are not studying mountains in Europe, maybe you're studying mountains somewhere else in the world, um, you can look back here and find your mountain and learn a little bit more about it. The next book is called Stickman's Guide to Mountains and Valleys in Layers. This is a little bit more in depth of a book. Um, it has lots of words in it. Definitely not uh, strictly for first graders. Uh, this is definitely something you'll have to read to your kids. But what I like about it is really that it goes through all of the layers of a mountain all the way to the Earth's uh, center. And so I love that the illustrations are very colorful. There is a lot of words on the page though and very small print, but I like all of the vocabulary and it tells you uh, what peaks are, what valleys are, and discusses the things that you can find inside of a mountain like uh, gemstones, precious gemstones, and it talks about the earth's um, crust and earth center at one point talking about uh, how volcanoes get formed so this is a really good informational book. the next book is called how mountains are made and i just love these read and find out science book um everyone that i find is always a level two stage two but i do read these to my daughter and she enjoys them uh, we read one about rainforest last month and um, this one's really cute because it is like an adventure of these little kids who go hiking up a mountain and they just tell you all about what they see as they're hiking up the mountain and um, it talks about how some mountains are formed under the ocean and it shows like um, a fossil talks a little bit about fossils and here it's showing you uh, some mountains that are formed. It talks about the highest mountain, Mount Everest, and then it shows like some different layers here. And um, it talks about different plates where um, mountains can form. And uh, yeah, it's just a really good book. And it also has like a little experiment uh, right here where you can use a towel to try to mimic how a mountain would be formed. And speaking of ocean mountains, this one is called Marie's Ocean. This is very advanced, but I thought it was interesting. It talks about Marie Tharp and how she mapped the mountains under the sea. And 
what I liked about it was it's kind of like comic book style. My daughter kind of likes books that have comic book style to them. Um, again, it is a little bit advanced, but I think it's something you could at least read part of to your first grader and at least get uh, let them get the idea that there are mountain ranges under the ocean and this woman Marie Tharp was the person who mapped them all out and it talks about her life and uh, the struggles that she had uh, growing up and becoming somebody who could do this um, and she finally got the chance to work with somebody who let her do this and yeah it's a good book the next book is called Map and Track Mountains, and honestly, this is not one of my favorite books that I've selected, but I selected it because um, this book just gives you an idea of where the different mountain ranges are, and what I did like is that each page talks about a different mountain range. So this is the Himalayas, this one's the Andes, and they go through all the different mountain ranges. They talk a little bit about uh, what it's like on the different mountain ranges because not all mountain ranges have the same type of habitat and of course uh, different animals live on these mountain ranges and although some of them may be the same like there's mountain goats or there are rabbits uh, they're different types of goats they're different types of rabbits and so get kids especially in first grade they get to see all the different animals that live on these different mountains and another nice thing is in the corner they have like a small snippet of a map where these mountain ranges are located so you could get a big map and then pinpoint on your own big map where these mountains are located. The next book is called Food Webs, Mountain Food Webs by William Anthony and I really like this book because um, as you can see here it goes through uh, what mountains are, what the food web is and then it gives you an example of many different animals and the things that they eat and that's really what they show in this book for example this is the himalayan wolf and the things the himalayan wolf would eat i love that it has realistic pictures it is very short uh, just a little bit of information on each page for you to read and the kids really get an idea of what the food web is and then at the very end of the book i like this that it has the whole mountain food web listed and you can follow with your finger from the sun all the way up to the predators and I like that they have different um, vocabulary and they do talk about what predators are, what herbivores are, and what carnivores are. And then my favorite book out of all of these, it's called How to Build Our World, Make a Mountain Range by William Anthony. And I love this book because I had an idea to make a mountain with my daughter and then I found this. And it's great because it tells you like, how to build a mountain and, it, and you start at the base and then it tells you what a snow line is and a peak and a range and it tells you all about you know how mountains are formed but as you go along you're building the mountain with the author of the book and I just thought it was so cool and I have a great idea for this so keep an eye out on my shorts because I'll definitely be posting uh, how our mountain turns out when we build it and then as a bonus these are just some little extra books now this is a storybook it's called Mimi and the Mountain Dragon I just got it because well it's about mountains um, and actually it is about a little girl who lives in um, Switzerland and she lives on top of a mountain and this person tells a story of um, why in their culture they go up the mountain during Christmas time ringing bells and singing Christmas carols and the story is about a little girl who finds a dragon and people in the village believe that there's a dragon at the top of the mountain and they don't really care for dragons that much and when she finds this baby dragon she knows she has to get it back to its mother and she cares for the dragon and she gets it back up the mountain to its mother and uh, so it's all about what happens and I won't give it away but my daughter did like this story.
And then the last book I would say honorable mention is uh, I Am Winged and Wild, Swooping and Strong, I Live in the Mountains, Who Am I? Now, I thought that this book was actually going to be about a lot of different animals. Turns out it's just about one animal. Uh, which was a little disappointing, but it goes through and it shows you each part of the animal. It says, here is my eye, and then it goes on, here are my feet, and then you find out in the middle of the book what it is, and it talks about the golden eagle, and so this is a bird that lives on a mountain. It's a good book if you just want to um, talk about one type of animal that lives on the mountain and I thought it was nicely illustrated and well done. So I hope that you enjoyed this book list. I know we'll be reading all these in October. I hope you can incorporate some of these into your learning and I'll see you in the next video.